The clock is now running on the Playbook Podcast, the podcast where you take a deeper dive into the game of business, leadership, teamwork, character, the things that drive your motivation and build dedication. When you get a good look at the game plan of great business leaders, you start to formulate your own playbook and your own rise to the top. Make your next play your best play. And now, here are today's game captains, Glenn Amorell and Andy Phillips. Let's go! Welcome back to the Playbook Podcast. Andy Phillips. Joining me as always is Glenn Amorell. Glenn, how you doing? I'm doing great. Glenn, I got a question for you, and we always like to relate these to the guests that we're having on. We have a great guest on today I'm excited for, for a personal reason, which we'll get into in a second. But for starters, Glenn, what do you think the key component of team building is? If you had to, I know there's many components. What do you think the key component to team building is? Wow. Um, that's a, you could spend a whole episode uh, times 10 on this. Um, I think, you know, the, the best answer would be communication, communicating your vision to your teammates. Absolutely. Um, so that, I'll go with that. I like that, that because I like that because you you can have all these other qualities and goals, but if no one knows about them because you don't have communication, it doesn't matter. It was like so that. tough because you asked me just one and it, it was tough to pick one. So I um, to put you on the spot. <laughs> that's right. Um, I got a question for you and I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, right. This question has been pondered many, many a times is what are your thoughts on paying college athletes? Ooh. Um, <laughs> okay. So, I'm a former college athlete, so I think this is actually going to surprise people. I would say no, simply because I think it opens up a whole new bag of worms. Specifically, I do think there is something to the fact that when you're 18 years old, you still need that discipline. And sometimes the discipline goes away when you're making all the, you know, making all the money. Like, for example, if you're the highest selling jersey in college football, you might not take – the liking to, you know, get yelled at in Tuesday film. I just think it opens up a can of worms. Um, if there was a way to get kids extra money, not too much, but, you know, an extra thousand bucks for the summer when you're around campus, okay. But when it comes to straight, you're on this poster, you're signing these autographs, I'm not ready for that yet just because I'd like to see more guidelines before then. And also, I do think when you leave college, there's many opportunities to it doesn't have to be at you know the NBA level or NFL level to make that money. And with that being said, I am excited to bring in Kevin Mays. Kevin is the owner at Flint United Basketball Club in Flint, Michigan. And uh, I've known Kevin since college. We were both Central Michigan Chippewas. And uh, Kevin has a resume, a laundry list long, yet he's very young. So I'm pumped to bring in Kevin to talk more of us about Flint United Basketball. Kev, how you doing? Doing there we well, go. There man. we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> How you doing, Kev? Good, man. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, it's an honor, a pleasure to be here and, uh, and join you guys this morning. Well, we're, we can't wait to have you because what you're going to talk about is different than a, what a lot of people that we've had on the show are going to talk about. I mean, it's not every day you get an owner of, uh, you know, professional type basketball club. And uh, for you especially, it's new. So, um it, like you said, the league's been around, but Flint itself is new. So let's just start off with this question. The first half is going to be business focus. So in your case, more the basketball focus. So just tell us about Flint United and tell us about how the club really started forming and getting to the point you are now. Yeah, absolutely. So we made our you know initial announcement about bringing the team to the city back in September. This comes off the heels of me doing some consultant work for another firm out in L.A., and the league is one of our clients. So, you know, I started to dissect the league, learn what it took to make a team, how teams were profitable, how successful other teams had been. And being from the city of Flint, you know, a city that's synonymous with the game of basketball, it was a no brainer. You know, once I figured out what was truly, you know, needed and what it took, you know, there was, you know, I won't even say light bulb, but fireworks and all that stuff went off in my head and we just got going. We have a, a professional hockey team here, professional soccer team, and this fell right in alignment with the foundation of, of sports and athletics in our community. So been rocking and rolling since then. 
Right. So you're uh, adding your mark to uh, to Flint, Michigan there. So you say this is um, a passion job for you. Can you um, describe what makes it so important to you? And, you know, I, I get asked this question a bit and, you know, I won't say that I was a bad kid or I had a bad you know, childhood or anything like that. Um, if I didn't play sports, I'm sure I would have been just fine. But sports, athletics, and the foundation and the structure that has given me has brought me to where I am today. And I, I truly think that there's so many outliers and arms that can come off of this where we can have a true impact on, on my community. Uh, you know, we've been through the worst of anything that a city in you know, America can go through. And we're truly turning the corner. If, if we can say that, it's tough for people that aren't from here to see that. But there's a lot of good things going on. And for me to add a true key foundational piece to be a community leader through the organization, I mean, it, it's an, it was a no-brainer for me. So, you know, the passion drives from starting with when I was a young kid watching a few of my family members run up and down the football field. They're going into packed gyms during the summer for Canusa games or, you know, pro-am games and just being a part of, you know, a rich tradition and in, in history of, of sports in our community. It, it, it drives me on a daily. And you talk about being an athlete and we're going to get into that because your level of an athlete is different than a lot of people's. Um, so we're gonna get into that here in a little bit, but so I'm from Lansing, Michigan, about an hour from Flint. I know how important basketball is in the state of Michigan, but specifically Flint. I mean, even the greatest time in Lansing was in that 99, 2000 era in Michigan state, but they were still known as the Flintstones because they had four of the key pieces on that team were from Flint, including your head coach, Charlie Bell. So just talk to us a little bit about the type of impact because it's not a normal city where you're just throwing in a, a pro sports team. It's going to affect Flint in a great matter. Tell us what, how you expect it to, Flint, uh, to affect the Flint community, but also maybe what you've already seen. Man, I mean, it's, it kind of gives me chills because of – how much has transpired since September 18th when we made this announcement. Um, I mean, I'll say the red carpet has been rolled out by the community, by the city at every level. People want to see this succeed. It's time for it to succeed. It's, it's kind of been tried before and unfortunately we didn't have that success. Um, but you know, just with the experience that I have in, in sports as an athlete, as a business professional, um, we've just made it to a point to where, you know, things are, are really coming together. And, you know, looking at, you know, Charlie, Mateen, Mo Pete, Antonio Smith, and the Flintstones and that core group of athletes, they truly, you know, set a tone for, for the city of Flint, even though we had, you know, the Glenn Rices, the Jeff Grayers, and the Andre Rises, and the Kelvin Toberts, and, you know, this list just goes on and on and on and on before and after that. I mean, even right now, you've got, you know, guys in the NFL, guys in the NBA, and it's just, you know, it, it's, it's truly time for, you know, another level in the game. I have no doubt it's going to succeed personally, just because like you, you named all those guys and just Flint is known for basketball. And not just that, it's, you know, not only what the community has been through recently in the last few handful of years, but also you guys are just known for it's known for toughness. It's known for battling and fighting. And um, I mean, you saw it, the teams that were led by the Flintstones were the toughest teams in the nation. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think you guys are doing something great, but uh, Glenn. Um, you say the communities behind you on this project, which is great. Is the, uh, is the business community um, behind you on this and, and how are you uh, marketing this, this project and this team, you know, through fundraising and, chambers and sponsorships and, and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'll say if not for the support of the business community, we wouldn't be having this conversation. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I've worked for the Flint Firebirds as the director of sales there. I worked for the Flint City Bucks as director of game day operations. So I, I had the, the connections and the ties to the community in that way. So, you know, it was you know, I, I walked myself in a lot of doors. I've been able to present properly, but 
you know, I'm not Mark Cuban, you know, I'm not, you know, not yet, <laughs> right? Not yet. I'm not sitting on a, a stockpile of, of funding to make this happen. So, and then going up against COVID, you know, we're only allowed 375 fans in our arena and that's up just 175 from two weeks ago where we were only allowed 200. And this is in a 4,500 person arena. Um, we have to be very, very creative from a business standpoint to make it make sense for the businesses in our community, um, especially in year one. So they've, you know, given us a commitment and I myself and we've given them a commitment on a return on that. And I mean, it's like I said, I mean, this is everybody's excited. I mean, if you if you talk to anyone, they're going to be like, I can't wait for this to happen. We still don't know what it'll look like 100 percent because of you know where we are. And there's still hurdles and obstacles to get over. But I think we've got some great, great things in place to, to make it make sense in year one and in year four and five, six, seven and eight. So we'll be uh, we'll be here for a long time and making that impact in the community. I love it. That's fantastic. I'm, I'm going to have to get to a game when I get home. Or is there is there any uh, Pennsylvania teams in the league? Oof, Pennsylvania. Yeah, I was spot. just looking at the teams, and there's some some interesting teams out there. Definitely close. I know we get over to. We are in Boston, New Jersey. Oh, Jersey's close. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna have to find my way there. Yeah, the Tri-State Admirals. We play them like April first or second or something like that. Okay. March, 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 March first or second. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, this is we're in the halftime. Halftime is fun because halftime we're gonna we're getting rid of business. We're getting rid of you know necessarily leadership stuff. We're just gonna peel back the curtain on Kevin Mays and get to know a little bit more about you. Let the listeners get to know a little bit more about you with some some stupid questions and with some 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 fun questions here. So it's a speed round. Um, if you have an explanation, go for it. If you don't, I'm, we're good with one word answers too. It's however fast you want to make it. So are you ready for the speed round? Ready to roll. First car you ever owned. On this show, we like year, make, and model. 1992 Chevy Crew Cab Silverado. Tenant windows, aftermarket stereo, actually West Coast custom speakers. Yeah. <laughs> You're the coolest guy in the block with that one. That's right. All right, what's your, what's your biggest fear? Falling from a tall building. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, I will say the good news is you probably won't remember it. Right. <laughs> All right. Do you have a favorite book or a favorite podcast? Favorite book is probably going to be uh, Shoe Dog, the, uh, the story about Nike. Oh, yeah. I've heard of that. Yeah. 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 That's my favorite book. And it's all about like Phil Knight and everything like that, right? And like yeah. the journey to become what they are now. Right. Absolutely. I might have to get that. Is it long? Not too much. No, not too much. I'm not reading too much. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, what's your favorite movie? Catch Me If You Can. Okay. Leonardo DiCaprio. Leo's good. He, I don't think he's had a, a flop. Has no. Leo had a flop? Is, is, good question for the group. Is there a bad Leo movie? Hmm. Not that I've seen. I haven't seen a bad one either. <laughs> There's only him and Denzel. I don't... and. Uh, Kevin Costner, I can't think of a bad one of him either. No, he, uh, he did Waterworld was like lukewarm. Okay, I didn't see that, so maybe it's just what I've seen. <laughs> right, right. Don't watch it. Don't watch it's it. It's long. <laughs> All right, who, who's your uh, favorite athlete ever? Mike Tyson. Okay. Mike Tyson, you know. Most you ever squatted. I know you used to – toss a house on your back and throw it up for five reps. So yeah. most you ever squatted for a single rep? 700 pounds. 700 pounds. Nice and easy. I think the most <laughs> I ever truly squatted was 625. I, on the box squat, when you had the little box, right. box under you, you no, can go up to 800 on that. That's easy. But true squat, 700 pounds? What? True squat. Competition depth. Woo! <laughs> Nope. 800 right. pounds easy right <laughs> not my world <laughs> all right so i ask you this question because you have a deep tie to all three of these sports so which is your favorite basketball football or track and field track and field and we'll get into that here in a little bit also it's going to kind of be tied into this question what was a better feeling like 
not when you look back on it at the exact moment when it happened, what was a better feeling for you when you won a Mac championship in football or the first time you became an all American in track and field track and field. You know, I think I know why, but we'll, it, it, would that be because it was more everything wrote on you? Yeah. I yeah, think it's a better way to put it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, just the, the trajectory and the, the journey of a track season and how you train, it's like you have to temper yourself. You know, it's, it's not – like you have to, it's, it's not always about, hey, go as hard as you can all the time. Sometimes you're training for that last throw whenever it's going to be. Right. Um, you have to have your body ready to peak at the right time. Right, right, right. So, you know, probably even, maybe not even the All-American part, but just before that, like I, when I broke the school record, set the conference record, um, I think we were at Akron and – and it's just it's a feeling that you can't you can't explain. Well, your 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 athletic background is off off the wall, so it's it's inc- it's crazy. But all right, so you're a Chester Michigan Chippewa, as I am. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you get this. I've always noticed it can be an airport, it can be anywhere. If you see it, someone in chip gear, someone sees you rocking a, a chip shirt, I'll hear people randomly yell, "Fire up!" Because "Fire up chips" is our slogan. So I want to ask you, where's the weirdest place you've been, the strangest place you've been where someone yelled fire up at you? Oh, man, we were – I was on my honeymoon. We were in – where were we at? St. Kitts. St. Kitts. And there's this, like, not a tiki hut, but, like, just a random palm tree bar off of a sandbar. And uh, you go in and like every school in the country has flags up. And there was actually somebody bringing a CMU flag into the bar to put up in the ceiling. It was crazy. How ironic is that? So I was my weirdest place is Jamaica when I was on my honeymoon as well. There was a former Central Michigan professor who happened to be there at the same time. And, you know, at resorts, everyone seems like family when you're there. Right. <laughs> it could be that you're all living there for a week or it could be the drinks. I'm not sure which one, but. <laughs> All right. Uh, last one. Your favorite meal. Uh, you can be specific on the actual food itself or just even a place. Man, probably uh, my mom's tacos. Okay. Yeah. I what makes them different? So if you've never been to Flint, Flint tacos are made a lot different than a lot of other places. Those, <clears throat> those Berea tacos are becoming a thing now. Um, but in Flint, you take a corn tortilla, you heat up a pan of a lightly, well, not lightly oil, but an oil pan, and you fry the shell. Meat inside, cheese, everything else you want. It's the best thing ever. So you, the, the key is frying the corn, the corn frying shell the first. Corn shell. Man, it is something special. <laughs> You're also going to make your mom happy, so you can probably, probably get those whenever you want now. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, well, that was halftime. That was great. So we're going to move on to leadership and experience focused questions here. And like I mentioned, you're young, but you have a great resume that goes even before you got into the business world. It goes back to your college. So that's what I want to talk to you about. You were a two-sport Division One athlete. And not just a two-sport athlete like someone who, you know, happened to dabble in two. You were great. I mean, you, you won a MAC championship. I know you didn't play football all four years, but you won a MAC championship. And then you go and you're – conference record holder, two-time All-American in track and field. How has that helped you in life after sports? Because it's not just the commitment of scheduling and work ethic. You succeeded at the highest levels you possibly could. So how has that helped you in life after sports? Man, it's just, you know, a continuous development and continuous training. You know, that first year was crazy. I mean, I still look back at I don't know how, you know, I made it through some of those days, especially in the spring when, you know, I was truly, you know, practicing and competing in two sports. Like the day of the spring game, I played in the spring game, left there immediately and went through in my first, you know, outdoor competition. Um, And, you know, it's just, it's not something that you think about intentionally on a daily basis, but like at the time, nothing could be harder than that. 
I mean, you know, no doubt <laughs> you keep going forward and then 700 pound squat, nothing can be harder than that. And X and Y and Z. And it's just, you know, compounding interest of, of dedication to, you know, whatever your next goal is. And, you know, I just, you know, I, I don't say I look in the face of fear and anything like that, but it's just like, Hey, you know, we're going to get through it. If we fail, we'll do something else and we'll try again and we'll go back and reassess. And, you know, it's just, if, if you, if you don't test your mental fortitude, your physical fortitude, then, you know, you'll never reach those next levels. Phenomenal. That's awesome. Um, now, um, in the beginning, Andy asked me a question about what I thought was the most important part of leadership or team building, actually. And uh, I said communication, but right up there is culture. Now, with a new organization like uh, Flint United, what steps have you uh, taken to create a, a great culture? Man, I, I'll say that I've, I'm, I've probably been failing in this area right now. There are so many moving parts. It is extremely difficult to build and develop a culture. But I think that hopefully the energy that I give off and the commitment, the passion, and the drive that I've shown through these first few months in our development, you know, spreads and rubs off on those that are working around me. And I think the energy that's been reciprocated is a testament to that also. You know, it's one of those things to where, you know, maybe next year we'll be in a much better place, you know, time-wise and in preparation, and we can truly focus in on those things. But in the beginning, you just have to care for people, you know, taking care of the small things, making sure that, you know, the areas that someone else may be having struggles in that, you know, I can take some of that pressure off of them, answer questions before they're asked, have things taken care of and, you know, putting people in the positions to do what they're best at. I think those have been two of the first and initial things that, that I've started to do to, to build culture. Um, but it's tough, you know, being in, mm. being an athlete, being in a leadership role and starting a new business, it's tough to delegate. It's tough to choose who to do what when you feel like you want to do it all yourself and know all and see all. But there's no way I go into this thing without, you know, a few other hands and, and to be successful. So I say uh, those are two things for sure. Yeah. De delegation can be a challenge for sure. Absolutely. I think part of the thing with delegation too, and not, this isn't anything about employees that we work with or employees that you work with, but it's, I think Gary V says something uh, to the, to the effect of as a business owner, you can, you should never expect your employees to work as hard as you. You can't have that expectation. That's right. And sometimes when it comes to delegating, that's the hardest part because you're going to tell yourself, I know if I do it, it will get done the right way, but that doesn't always create the best culture either. And like you talked about earlier, it's okay to fail. You got to take the chances and reassess. So sometimes as a leader in the build culture, you have to let your, your people fail and then you reel them back in and we solve it from there because that's how you build the culture. But so I've talked about your resume. Now I'm going to get into it a little bit because you're young yet. I'm going to look right here. You're, you were a director of Central Michigan University's Athletic Fund. You were a supervisor at GM. Uh, you now are an owner of a professional basketball club. You've already mentioned the other uh, sports organizations you've been a part of. What leadership traits are the most important for you? Because every one of those roles I just mentioned, director, supervisor, owner, they all come with a leadership like role and expectation. So what has made you succeed at all those, uh, you know, different spots? Man, it's, it's a lot of good things, but then it's like, it's this one quote or saying, like, if you want something done fast, have a lazy person do it. <laughs> so, so I won't say, I won't say that I'm lazy, but, I always look for the easiest path or the easiest route to success. That's not lazy at all. That's smart. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> We're smarter, not harder. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I've really only held, I want to say 
when I worked for, I worked for a company called the Aspire Group, starting out in Atlanta, and then was transferred to Kansas University, um, or the University of Kansas. Um, and those probably were the only couple of years that I worked in like an associate or entry level position. And it's just like, I, I, I don't mind doing the hard work, but I'm not going to sell, you know, hand-to-hand tickets if I don't have to. Right. Yeah. You got bigger goals. <laughs> yeah. Give, give me the big stuff and, and let me get out of the way. So after that, it's just being able to look from, you know, a top-down approach and, and you know, kind of just look out in that way. I've kind of, I guess just the way I was raised is where it was started. And like, I was an only child and it was like, hey, you know, my mom was always around and very influential and impactful and loving and you know, mate, I never want it for anything, but she always made sure that I was able to govern myself accordingly. <laughs> um, and, and it just, you know, has, has, you know, really shown through the work that I've been able to do, building good relationships, treating people the right way, um, doing good business, and, and all those things have, have kind of all accumulated to where we are. Awesome. Great answer. Well, Kevin, you've obviously accomplished a ton. Um, what's the best advice you ever received from a mentor? Keep working. <laughs> Keep working. You know, this morning, last night, the day before yesterday, you know, this is something that you have to build and it has to exist beyond today. You know, I've got to now think about how I can take care of and pay 15, 20 other people. Um, right. And that's not something that we do on a daily basis. That's not something that we're, you know, taught. So figuring that part out is scary. And, you know, it doesn't allow me to take a step back. Um, yeah, that's the crazy part. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's like the Rocky mentality. You, you got to keep punching, get up off the mat and, uh, work another day. Cause what yeah. you just said, that's not a skill. You're not just born with the ability to like understand how you're going to pay employees. Like <laughs> that's not how it works. So you have to work for that. Yeah, for sure. Best. Love it. Just keep working. I love it. Keep working. All right, man. So we got. The last question we call the Hail Mary question. You played football. You understand last play of the game. You got to give it your best play. So that's what we're going to do here. Hail Mary question. Go back to 22-year-old Kevin, which I know isn't too long ago, but based on your resume, your years are like like dog years, it seems like. (laughs) You may only be out of college for about nine years, but you've lived, you know, what, 56 or 72. So go back to 22-year-old Kevin. Give yourself a word of advice. Oh, man. Do this when I'm 22. <laughs> Do this. Okay. Okay. Um, don't wait. Don't wait. I mean, now with the connectivity we have to the world, the things that we know to be true, um, I should have done something like this a long time ago. <laughs> that That's so funny, actually, that you say that because most people will look at you and go, wow, he's young to be in this position and doing this, but you're a natural go-getter and leader. You're saying to yourself, "I'm why am I so old doing this? Right. (laughs) That's so funny. Well, that's all. Kevin, this has been an awesome episode. Uh, We really enjoyed having you. I'm going to give you like 30, 45 seconds to tell people how they can get a hold of you and how they can support your efforts. Yeah, absolutely. You can reach out to me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all that. Just search Kevin Mays. I'm sure I'll pop up pretty close to the top. And then Flint United is Flint United Basketball anywhere you go, and and we'll pop up there as well. And then, uh, yeah, please reach out if you are interested in supporting, coming to a game, learning anything about the athletes, the league, the team. Uh, Always open to do those things. And uh, Thank you guys so much for having me. This has been uh, probably one of the best podcast interviews I've had. So thanks. Awesome. We well, we really that. appreciate that. And uh, thanks again for uh, joining us. Um, and I'd like to thank the listeners. Uh, please comment and share. My name is Glenn Amarill. I'm Andy Phillips. Uh, what's in your playbook? <laughs>